arthropoda i can explain about the general characters here the arthropoda subphylum it means the arthropoda phylum can be divided to three subphylums one is what trilobita another one is the helicerata and another one is the mandibulata last class we can discuss about the trilobita now here trilobita now we can discuss about the helicerata see i already said Canis indicates a, a modified mouth. Now, this calicerata bodies can be divided into two parts. The first part is called as a cephalothorax or also called as a prosoma. Pro means friend, soma means body. And the, the second part is a abdomen. Abdomen is also called as a opistosoma. Opisto indicates later, soma means body. Now, in cephalothoracic region, now see in cephalothoracic region, basically we having a six segments is present. And if you go for the abdomen, or also called as a opisto. Soma, they have the how many segments will be present means 13 segments is present. Now here, if you observe this one, this opistosoma again it will be divided into two parts. One is the mesosoma and another one is the metasoma. Now, for calicinata subphylums having two classes, one is what Zyphosura and another one is the Arachnida. They have some differentiation is there regarding to the calicerata and the mandibulata. What is the differentiation between the calicerata and the mandibulata means? In calicerata, there is no mandibles. And there is no antenna. That's why the differentiation between the calicerata and the mandibulata means in calicerata, the body can be divided into how many parts? Two parts. The first part is what? Cephalothorax. Cephalothorax means the head is fused with the thoracic region that is called as a cephalothorax or also called as a prosoma, anterior body. They have in the six segments. The remaining the posterior body that is called as a abdomen or also called as a opistosoma, they have in the how many segments will be there? 13 segments. The differentiation between the calicerata and mandibulata means in calicerata there is no mandibles and there is no antenna but uh, mandibulata they having a antennas and they having a mandibles now we can discuss about in calicerata the first class is the xyphosura now here Now, in Kelisereta, the first class is what? Xyphosura. I already said, totally how many segments is there? 19 segments is present. In that, the prosoma having a 6 segments and the opistosoma having a 13 segments. In the segments, what are the appendages is present? Now, see here, for Xyphosura, prosoma, I said how many segments? 6. 1, 4, 1. Totally 6 segments. Among 6 segments, the first two segments is a calicerate. I already said, what is calicerate? The modified mouth is known as a calicerate. Now, inside, in this first segment, they having a mouth is present. Under the next four segments, they having a walking legs. If you observe, one, two, three, four. Four pairs of walking legs are present. These are the four pairs of walking legs. And then, next segment, they having a pushing legs. Now, this is called as a pushing legs. By the using of this pushing legs, the organism can move from one place to the another place. And then, if you go for the opistosoma, this remaining, this totally, this part is called as a opistosoma. Now, see, in opistosoma, the first one is what? Mesosoma. In mesodoma, the first segment they having a genital operculum. In this region, they having a genital operculum is present. Here, 
genital operculum indicates the a reproductive region and then the next four segment they having a book gills it is very very important the respiratory specialized respiratory organ here what is differentiation between gills and book gills means here the gills is the a closed book shape based upon the shape that they named as a book gills and then the remaining part that is called as a telsa this remaining part this tail part is called as a telsa and very very important one this is the head region this head region is covered by a, a protein coat this protein coat is called as a carapace the best example for this one is the limulus this is called as a limulus limulus is commonly called as a king crab and also it is called as a living fossil why this limulus is called as a living fossil means this previous ancestor organisms they already extinct after so many generation again it can show us previous ancestor character that's why it is called as a living fossil now the next class we can go for the arachnida now the next class is the arachnida see the best example of the arachnida that is the scorpion if you observe for zypozora the first segment they having what cerisere here also the first segment they having a cerisere and then the next segment they having a pedipalps now this part is called as a pedipalps this part is called as a cerisere it is the modified mode the next segment they having a pedipalps next next four segments they have what walking legs see first pair second pair third pair fourth pair they have again four pairs of legs that's why prosoma you have to observe this is a a modified cerisere modified mode that is called cerisere and uh, this one is the pedipalps and this one is the four pairs of walking legs is present next if you go for the opisthosoma that is the abdominal region in this abdominal region they have a book lungs are present if you observe here in zypozora they having a book gills book gills means compressor is a nature is a aquatic nature if you observe the book lungs the habitat is what type of habitat terrestrial type of habitat and then the remaining part that is called as spernate now this part is called as a spernate if you observe for scorpion in this tail region they having a poisonous glands are present and then here the excretory system mostly keep in mind in arthropoda the excretory system is the malpighian tubule i already said malpighian tubule means bowel's capsule with the glomerulus combined called as a malpighian tubule and very very important one a specialized excretory gland is present that excretory gland is called as a coxal gland so many times they ask this question sir the coxal glands can be seen in which class that is under the arachnida the best example is what palamnius palamnius is commonly called as a scorpion and then aradia aradia is commonly called as a spider if you observe the differentiation regarding to the zypozora and the arachnida in zypozora from this onwards they having a walking legs is present but in this region they have a pedipalps that they having a book gills but if you observe they having a book lungs that is the main differentiation regarding to the zypozora and then arachnida now next we can go for the now the third sub phylum that is called as a mandibulata here i already said the differentiation between that cerisereta and mandibulata in mandibulata they having a mandibles what is mandibles mandibles is like a teeth for cutting of the food materials and maxillae for folding of the food materials and also they having a antennae now see in prawns the best example regarding to that uh, mandibulata in that, that one is the prawns this is called as a antenna sensory organs if you observe that uh, prawns mark misa lagunte that is called as a antenna and this one is called as a sensory organs now in mandibulata the body can be divided into how many parts three parts that is head thoracic and abdomen here in mandibulata totally four classes are present what are the four classes the first one is the crustaceans and second one is the chilopoda and third one is the diplopoda and the fourth one is the insecta 
they having some exception is there what is that in mandibulata the body can be divided into three parts head thoracic and abdominal except in the crustaceans in crustaceans the head is fused with the thoracic that is called as a cephalothorax and the second part is the abdomen now in crustaceans first they having a two pairs of antenna now see one to one pair two pairs two pairs of antenna is present and then one pair of mandibles if you observe in this region they having a for cutting of the food materials they having a mandibles and they having a two pairs of maxillaries in this region see this region one pair one pair totally two pairs of maxillaries is present and then the exoskeleton is made up of a calcium meer eppudna market ki vellthe manam ee royal teeth appudu bayi odustam that is made up of what calcium that is called as a exoskeleton and very very important one here a specialized excretory gland is present that is called as a green glands or also called as a antennary glands if you observe this one see at the base of the antenna they have what color green color is present based upon their color that is called as a green glands or also called as a antennary glands and it is an excretory one so many times they can ask green glands can be seen in under the class of crustaceans and you have to observe coxa glands can be seen in under the class of uh, arachnida and this the best example is the palaeoma palaeoma is commonly called as a prawns keep in mind palaeomius is different palaeoma is different palaeomius indicates scorpion palaeoma indicates the prawns and then cancer cancer is commonly called as a crab this is the according to the crustaceans next we can go for the pyropoda now the next class is the kylopoda see kylopoda is also called as a centipedes centipedes indicates like a century why because see this one is the segments from each segments they having a how many pairs of legs they have a one pairs of legs if you observe it can see like a hundreds of legs that's why chiropoda is also called as a centipedes now what is the characteristics of the kylopoda or centipedes means here i have said each segment having a how many pairs of legs they having a one pairs of legs and also they having a poisonous claws here in every segments the first pair of segments they having a poisonous claws are present i have said they having a mandibles they having a maxillae they having a antennae and very important one here the respiration is what type of respiration tracheal respiration here if you observe for zyphosura the respiration is through book gills and if you observe this one arachnida the respiration is through the book lungs if you observe crustaceans the respiration is expressed through gills but for kylopoda and for the diplopoda and for the insecta the respiration is what type of respiration means tracheal respiration here what is meant by tracheal respiration means in this region in lateral side they having a pores through this pores the air is entered into the inside totally in this area they having a, a longitudinal segment like structure is present that is called as a trachea through trachea the respiration is takes place that respiration is called as a tracheal respiration the best example is the scolopendra scolopendra normally we are interested in the jerry and this one now next we can go for the diplopoda now the next class is the diplopoda if you observe what is differentiation between the centipedes or kylopoda and with the diplopoda diplopoda is also called as a millipedes what is differentiation between the centipedes and the millipedes means see in centipedes each segment having a one pair of legs but if you observe diplo di means two that's why each segment having a two pairs of legs are present that's why it can appearance as a millions of legs that's why this diplopoda is also called as a millipedes and then that's why about each segment having a two pairs of legs are present and it is in a herbivores it means which can they can eat normal plant juices that is called as a herbivores if you observe the centipedes that is called as a carnivores that is the differentiation remaining everything is same between the centipedes and the millipedes the respiration is what type of respiration 
tracheal respiration and they have a mandibles and they have a maxillaries the best example for the diplopoda is the julus this is called as a julus now the next very important class that is the insecta that's why the largest phylum is the arthropoda and the largest class is the insecta 70% of animals is under the class of the insecta now if you observe now if you observe the insecta the best example is the periplaneta americana periplaneta americana they are commonly called as a cockroach if you observe arthropoda indicates artho means jointed poda means legs if you observe the legs see here like a jointed man jointed man based upon this you can name it as a arthropoda and if you observe i can wrote one character hexapoda hexa indicates what six poda means legs now this part is called as a head part this part is called as a thoracic region and this part is called as a abdomen in thoracic region they have a three segments is present one two three like this three segments is present each segment having a one pair of legs one pair one pair one pair total how many pairs is there three pairs it means six legs are present that is a specialized character in insect that's why it can show what type of characters hexapoda characters and if you observe this is the mandibles this mandibles can be used for the cutting of the food material beyond this they having a maxilla is present and also see this one this is called as a antenna it can identify the food material and it is a sensory organ and very important one they having a two pairs of wings are present except for lepisma lepisma i wrote here lepisma is commonly called as a silver fish meeku kattaga cheppalante chala puruguru ani artham that's why then in this silver fish wings are absent that is very important one and then here the excretory organ is the malpighian tubule mt indicates the malpighian tubule and very important one these are the urocortex what is mean by urocortex means the excretory material is the uric acid the type of organism is called as a urocortex means suppose we are the mammals our excretory material is what urea that's why we are called as a ureotes these are the urocortex we are the ureotes and then for insect the best example is what periplaneta americana and lepisma commonly called as a silver fish so many times they will ask the question in silver fish what is the excretory material all are thinking that silver fish all they can think that it is a fish the excretory material is the ammonia but keep in mind silver fish it is not a fish and it is a insect tomorrow class we can discuss about the mollusca